Joining us now to talk about Earth's relatively close call with the asteroid is James Rice, astrogeologist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. tonight. Let's start with the asteroid. Was sure. there anything that we ever had to worry about, or is this simply just too far away for anything to happen, or could we even feel the effects of this? This one wouldn't really do anything. It passed about 27,700 miles from the surface of the Earth, so it's a good distance. But that's pretty close when you talk about objects zooming around in space. That is actually within uh, the orbit where communication satellites orbit. And uh, you know we're kind of in a cosmic shooting gallery. There are things zipping around through space. This one we just discovered this object a year ago, last February. And uh, it was about 50 meters across. And uh, if it would have hit, it would have been substantial damage. It could have wiped out a city. They call these, these guys are city killers. Um, but it, like I said, it didn't pass that close enough to do any kind of damage to the Earth. What happened, Earth actually, the Earth is bigger, so the gravity of the Earth pulled on it. And it's going to shorten its orbit around the sun by about 70 days. So it will be back. Um, it, will, it will be back in the Earth's neighborhood about 33 years from now. Almost exactly today. Uh, well, it will be February 15, 2046. We'll have another encounter with this object, but it won't be as close as it was today. Well, it came through. You said you saw it coming. Uh, it was predicted. But is there any way that these sort of things can stray off a projected path and wind up hitting Earth? Not at these distances. It, when you start getting closer, these critical thresholds of, of distance, the Earth's gravity can kind of like sucks things in. But at that distance, it was we knew the orbital geometry of the orbit very well, and there's no concern on that at all. The danger out there is there's a lot of things floating around. We don't know where they are. We don't know what they're doing. And that is kind of like, uh, you know, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it tonight, but I think it's something we need to definitely put more energy in studying in the future because uh, we see evidence of big craters on the moon all over the place, right? Well, Earth used to look like that early in our history when the planet first formed. And uh, so these impacts do happen. They're rare. One, the size that's in by today, usually hits the Earth about every 1,200 years. And I saw you mentioned earlier the Tunguska impact 105 years ago in Siberia. This object was about the size of what did the damage in Tunguska. And um, like I said, if it would have hit the surface, but there was, we knew it wasn't, it would have had the explosive uh, capability of about 200 bombs that were dropped like wow. in Hiroshima. So. Well, talking about that same meteor, what caused something like that to land? I mean, on one hand, there are reports that it was too small to be detected, but obviously it was large enough to cause the sort of damage it did. Right, right. Well, that object that uh, came in over the skies of uh, southern Russia was about 15 meters, okay, about one-third the size of the big asteroid we talked about earlier. It's kind of confusing because you want asteroids and meteors, and they're different things. Asteroids are these big boulders of rock zipping through space. Um, if they come through the Earth's atmosphere and land, that's when you start calling them a meteorite. And the one that came over um, the, uh, Russia today, we didn't even know it was coming. Um, most of the accounts I've read, like I said, it was much smaller. It's hard to detect smaller objects. And there's a lot of stuff in space. Space is not empty like we perceive it. There's a lot of things floating out there. Um, and whenever you see what you call a shooting star at night, those are usually sand-sized grains that are burning up about 60 miles, about, uh, I guess, 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And the reason they glow, they're traveling at such immense speeds, you know, around uh, 20, 25,000 kilometers an hour. And it's the friction. If you take your finger and drag it real quickly across the sheet on your bed, it gets kind of warm. That's what causes these things to glow. So a lot of stuff is always coming up over the sky, burning up. Our atmosphere protects us, but it's the big ones that get through. And the one today over uh, Russia, I've seen a small crater on a lake that it formed, but... Uh, it probably exploded in an air burst and a lot of fragments everywhere, but uh, it's early reporting anyway. If something like this happens again, with a meteor coming through that is large enough to detect, would there be enough time to get the word out and evacuate people in the affected areas? I mean, it's kind of scary yeah, when you no, think about something uh, like this coming through and, and there's no warning of it. No, it's something, you, like I said, we need to be thinking about and looking. You know, it's like that movie a couple of years, well, over well, a decade ago, Bruce Willis movie that flew to the asteroid. We have no capability to do that. If a big one is on the way right now, we're in trouble. It's going to hit. Uh, in terms of evacuating, it's going to depend on the rotation of the Earth. Uh, as the object comes to the atmosphere, it can go off course some because the atmosphere is real dense and the thing can wobble around some. 
So you don't know exactly where it's going to hit. You'd have a footprint for like a ground zero. And uh, you could maybe evacuate, but it depends on how much warning you would have. Um, probably a lot of panic generated with that. Um, like I said, these big, these 50 meter objects come about every 1,200 years. Uh, the problem is you just don't know statistically when that next one's going to come. And it, it's something to be concerned about. Uh, you know, I remember as a kid growing up, there was a cartoon I'll never forget. You know, dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago with an object. It was 10 kilometers, okay, it was a big object. Came through and wiped the dinosaurs out. If the dinosaurs would have had a space program, they may still be, still be here today. And I think that's one of the things why you need a vigorous uh, space program is to explore and find these things and be able to do something about it. But right now, we have no defense at all. James Rice will have to leave it there. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time. Some interesting stuff to think about.